My name is Glenn Clark. I'm from Dandridge, Tennessee. I've been building amplifiers for about 45 years and I enjoy it thoroughly. And I read a lot of the audio magazines like I am on the DIY forum. And I saw this odd watt amplifier that Bruce had designed. And so I built a small version of it on a breadboard just to see what it could do. And when I got it on the oscilloscope, I was very impressed. Then I put it on my system and you can see what I've done because I was so impressed with it, I started ordering parts and I started building it. And uh, I, so it's his circuit. I give the man credit where credit's due. I laid it out and I've enjoyed this thing thoroughly. And my friends are trying to take it away from me. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be successful. Now, the man that built the speakers is right over here, so we'll let him talk about his speakers, okay? Um, hi, uh, my name is David Shove. I live in Watsonville, California. It's about 80 miles from here, uh, just due south of uh, San Francisco. This is my first burning amp of the 10 years. Um, I have been very fortunate in the last two years to get to know the man that has built these, spe uh, that has built these speakers in the years past who has had to stop. He has arthritis and some other uh, health issues that have uh, caused him to stop. We are auditioning here at Burning Amp the last set of Edgar Horn Titan IIs. That's what we have here in the, in the demo room. And uh, I've been fortunate specifically to have actually built these under his tutelage. It's very much a Yoda and Luke Skywalker kind of thing where I actually got to learn a lot about how the speakers are actually formed and built and designed. And so I'm very fortunate to have this set and they're very sentimental to me as a result. So I'm glad to share them here at uh, Burning Amp and uh, thank you very much. Well, my name is Kerry Chen. The system I have bought today consists of a bottle head 3, 3S4 battery powered preamp. The preamp has the advantages. It doesn't take the power from the mains, which is it gives you clean DC power. The power amps are a pair of 13 EM7 mono block single ended triode amplifiers with one watt per channel. The speakers are a pair of ADS L420 speakers. System sounds very well in my condominium. The amplifiers cost approximately $110 to build. The preamp is $99 without batteries. Okay, I'm Skip Peck. I live in Hollister, California, south of San Jose. And I brought this up today. First time I've displayed anything here, but I've been building stuff for a long time. I'll start at the beginning. The, the source here is a Raspberry Pi 2B with an Allo Boss DAC on it. I like that because it uh, allows you to upsample to 384K, uh, taking the filter out of the, out of the DAC's operation and to my ear it sounds better. It's using Mood software which uh, does upsampling on the fly using SOX or SOX so it's been a good combination for me. That's feeding the preamp and the preamp is based on a um, neurochrome THAT or THAT driver, I don't know how he pronounces it. The upshot of it is that it takes a single-ended input and outputs balanced audio. And I wanted a balanced output for the power amplifier. And the power amplifier is paired amp camp amp cards, one pair per side. And since they're driven out of phase, then it's bridged. And the reason I created a bridged version was that I have Alltech duplex 605B speakers and open baffles. Those are 16 amp speakers, so I thought it might make sense to, to get a little more voltage drive for those drivers. Uh, the speakers I brought today are Studio One Pies. Uh, I built the boxes and used the kit from, from Pi Audio, Wayne Parham, in 2003, and my wife mosaic them. Uh, and they sit most of the time, but I haul them out whenever I need a, a relatively small speaker speaking from my point of view. Uh, and I figured I'm, I'm not in the kind of shape I might want to be to bring the Altex up because they have huge bass bins on them and so on. 
So that's the whole system, uh, and uh, hope it shows a few new things to the people and get a chance to hear it a little bit later. Thank you. Hi, I'm Javad Shadzi. I'm from Livermore, California, and uh, I'm here showing off my Strafi speakers. If you Google STRAFI online, uh, there's a build thread where I provide a lot of details on how I built these speakers. Uh, they feature a TransLAM construction, so they're built from many layers of wood, and uh, that allows me to create whatever shape I want. Uh, also, the inside has uh, varying profiles to create diffraction uh, from the back wave of the drivers. Uh, I use all Fatal Pro drivers in these, and they're pro audio drivers, so they're very efficient, and they uh, have a passive crossover around 1500 hertz with uh, 18 decibel per octave slopes. Uh, they play very flat from about 50 hertz to 20,000 hertz within a uh, 5 dB range, uh, plus or minus 2.5 dB. Um, I also build speakers for fun, and I'm available to help other people with their projects as well. Uh, I post a lot online, so I'm really happy to be here at Burning Man this year. Okay. Hi, my name is T. Khan. I'm from Sunnyvale, California, and I brought uh, uh, AMB, a uh, line of uh, power amplifier and a DAC today. Uh, the DAC is what I call Gamma 3. Uh, you see the two boxes over there. The box on the right is the power supply and the box on the left is the actual DAC itself. Uh, the DAC is a, a full featured DAC. It takes all kinds of inputs. Uh, it includes all kinds of uh, SPDIF, um, coaxial, uh, AES, um, you know, uh, coaxial with both uh, BNC and RCA, as well as uh, optical toss link. And it uh, outputs uh, imbalanced and unbalanced analog. Uh, it also has USB input, high res. All, all input supports 24-bit, uh, 192K uh, uh, resolution. And um, it uses uh, the Wolfson uh, 8741 uh, DAC chip. Uh, it uses two of them, one per channel, in a uh, differential mono uh, configuration. So it's a, it's a very high performance uh, DAC. It, it also has uh, galvanic isolation for all the inputs. Uh, and what it does is it drives uh, this power amplifier here. This power amplifier is uh, what I call the Beta 24. It's a fully differential, uh, fully discrete design. Uh, fully differential, so the uh, speaker outputs uh, are, uh, the plus and minus outputs are both active, uh, sort of like balanced or bridged. And the uh, signals going in uh, can be balanced or unbalanced, but the signal coming out is always balanced, even with unbalanced inputs. The topology is, uh, is fully complementary in a four quadrant configuration. Um, uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, both of these, you can go on my website, uh, www.amb.org. Hi, I'm Brian Levin. Uh, online, I'm known as uh, uh, Linux Works, and my company is Circona Audio. And uh, let's see, this is probably the seventh or eighth year that I've been here. Um, I come pretty much every single year. And my focus this year is on a DIY Arduino preamp. It's using the Arduino for the controller. It's using a PGA 2311 for the attenuator, the volume control. And I've got a custom PC board now at its fourth revision, which will be a group build. It's open source, hardware and software. And it uses uh, all kinds of RF control. Uh, RF remote control, infrared remote control, and uh, web-based remote control. So that's what I've got here today. I've got various um, preamps that I've built, uh, DACs, um, power supplies, uh, power amplifiers, uh, and some display devices as well. Hi, my name is Ryan. I am from San Jose, California, and I, this is my first burning amp I've ever been to. I uh, brought a couple of pieces that I brought. One of them is the Solos Folded Simplistic Phono Stage. Um, I also have the First Watt Aleph J that I built, and the O2 headphone amplifier that I am using as a preamp currently. Um, I'm 
at work building a proper preamp version using the using a bare O2 board um, in an enclosure with RCA ins and outs. Uh, it wasn't quite ready yet, but. Uh, Okay, I'm uh, Tom Voigt, Tom V on uh, DIY Audio. I'm from San Rafael, just over the bridge. Uh, I brought the speakers, uh, metronome tribute for Alpair uh, 10.3, uh, my own design using the Leonard Audio transmission line software. Uh, driving it is a not an, not an amp camp amp from Paul. Uh, it's his own design uh, using the Deschad feedback and, uh, and static induction trans, uh, transistors. Sitting next to it is uh, uh, Past Labs uh, AmpCamp 1.1 and uh, Paul has some several other neat stuff here. So, thank you. Uh, Wayne Colburn uh, from Past Labs. And uh, I brought the, uh, a couple of headphone amps that I'll be giving a talk on later on this afternoon. So they're DIY headphone amps uh, based on uh, op amps and a self-biasing output circuit. Um, got a couple of variations here with uh, 8823 in MOSFETs, uh, OPA 2604 in MOSFETs. I got another one with Darlingtons. So there's a lot of variability on what you want to choose to plug in there and, and, uh, and have uh, work. And uh, then as a source, we just have a Raspberry Pi feeding these, um, these two here. And then there's one open that you can take a look at inside. And then uh, later on, I'll be posting the schematics and uh, uh, talking about uh, what the parts do and where to get them. And I uh, also brought some boards along for today. So thanks. Yeah, so uh, my name is Falk, I'm from Germany. I live around the corner, so I didn't travel all the way, uh, but I'm German. I brought a pair of horns. Uh, a friend of mine, Wolfgang Nickel, helped to design the horn. We put ESS tweeters on them. All this wired with uh, self-made cables, and I brought a pair of monoblocks using the uh, Emission Labs 20B as a driver and the 1605 as a final stage. Uh, it's a Sakuma style amp, so there is no capacitor in the signal path, only transformers, lots of transformers. I call it the Iron Hog. And uh, yeah, additionally, I have also RCA wiring self made. A uh, friend of mine, Frank Kolaskowski, is doing them. Uh, so the most vintage part of my setup is the white MacBook. I just checked. Everything else is basically new parts. Thank you. My name is Tony Delgado. This is my first burning amp. Uh, I brought a 6SN7 power amp that I built myself. Uh, the cool thing about it is that it uses magic eye tubes and that there was zero financial outlay to build it. I built it all out of things that I salvaged, most of which I got for free. My name is Chris Russo. I'm from San Ramon, California. Uh, today I brought with me a few little projects I've been working on. The, uh, the preamp is a 12.4BA uh, preamp um, filled with Russian capacitors. I've also got a um, Marantz 1070. I'm just using that strictly as the uh, amplifier source today, uh, but that's got all uh, new transistors and uh, capacitors throughout. Uh, the final little project I've been working on are these speakers. They're a uh, Dayton point source, uh, 180, six and a half inch driver. They're in about a uh, one and a half cubic foot box, uh, tuned to about 60 hertz, and just has a little notch filter in there around 4,500 to uh, take away a little bit of the brightness.
it's really just showing off the speakers. So. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Uh, my name is Paul Norton. I'm the marketing manager of Linear Integrate Systems. I'm going to give you about a minute update on a little of the things we've been working on. Uh, we did finally come forward with the first dual N and P channel. We've got the 49 and the 689, which are now currently in production to get new product on. Uh, I would also ask you folks to take a look at the LSK 589. This is a device that goes between the 489 and the 389. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I guess so we're on, okay. Uh, the other thing to be looking at is we're also working on some new packages. We've come up with a smaller package called a DFN, half the size of a SOT23 with twice the Bauer dissipation. This is going to be put in all of our products, so right now we're releasing 4391, 40, uh, the uh, J174s, all the classics now are being re-released in the DFN package. So uh, a couple of the other things we're going to be working on this year is uh, voltage control resistors for gain control. So we're going to be having some application notes and some additional products as well as data sheets on that. You folks will be looking forward to. Um, other than that, people have been asking about the J74. Uh, right now, the Bs are in very short supply. For those of you that can use the Cs, you're doing yourself a favor as far as getting products sooner. Uh, the last item that I would also focus you on is, a lot of you folks are familiar with the, the 4391 and the 174, 75, and 76 series. What you need to understand, in addition to the fact that they're switches, they're also very good amplifiers. So if people looking for an N and a P channel complement, you might consider looking at that. We're going to be starting to focus on that. Other than that, any questions? I'm done. Thank you. Have a good show.